In this video, we're gonna make an absolutely insane lightsaber blade, one that's a super bright, can change to any color, has awesome animated effects, and doesn't have any dark spots. And it's actually pretty easy to do, so let's go. The first thing we need to do is collect a few materials and a couple of tools. Now, I like to get most of my materials from thecustomsabershop.com, so if we go ahead and navigate over there, I'll put a link in the description. What we're working with today is if you go to blades, pixel blade supplies, blade builder bundles. Now, as you can see, these things are not cheap. This blade is gonna be about $115 because we're buying quite literally the best technology available. If you want a more budget-friendly blade, I'll put a link up there or somewhere like that. But for this blade, what you're going to need is either this kit, which has all of the components I'm about to list, or you can get the components themselves. But either way, you should end up with this amazing PCB with LEDs facing not just two directions, but all four directions, thanks to these little sideward facing LEDs. A foam tube, which you'll put over that, a plastic diffusion tube, which will go over that, and then the actual plastic of the blade, which will go over that and also a blade tip that's hollowed out so the LEDs can slide into it, a PCB that you can wire the LEDs to so they can connect to the hilt, an adapter to hold that PCB in place, and a cap to protect the PCB once the blade is assembled. Now I know that sounds like a lot to worry about, like we're gonna have a super complex assembly process, but the assembly is actually super straightforward. I'll walk you through exactly how to do it, and you can do it in like half an hour, so it's really nothing to worry about. You will need some tools though. First up, you're gonna need a soldering iron to connect the LEDs to their PCB, and some wires as well for that same job. You'll also need some super glue or or weld on to strongly attach the blade tip and the blade base to the main body of the blade. And you'll also need some scissors or snips to cut the wires and trim the foam. But enough talk, let's get to work. The first thing we're gonna do is solder the LEDs to this little PCB connector right here. This little guy makes it so that our blade can be slid into the hilt and connect up just by touching the pins from the hilt, rather than us having to plug in a connector clip or something like that. It has three pads and they're labeled with plus, D, and a minus. So we're going to connect up the wires from the LEDs a five volt pad to the plus, from the LEDs data pad to the D, and from the LEDs ground pad to the minus. Now the pads on the LED side are already tinned. They already have some solder on there, which will make it super easy for us to solder our wires onto those pads. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for our little PCB connector. After heating up my soldering iron, I'll touch it to the first pad and let it heat up for a few seconds before I bring in the solder and touch it to the pad. And once the pad is hot enough, the solder should melt and flow around the pad there we go, just like that. Then I'll do the same thing for the other two pads, adding just enough solder to cover the whole pad, but not so much solder that the different pads have so much solder that they're bridging together and causing a short circuit. And once those pads are tinned, I also want to tin the wires themselves, which will make it, again, just super easy to do this soldering job. So I'll cut some super short wires, strip both ends, and then twist up the ends so the copper strands aren't just sticking out every which way. Then I'll do the same thing that we did for the pads, touching the iron to the wire to let it heat up, then bringing in the solder and letting it now flow and spread over the wire. Of course, we'll do this for all three wires and both ends of all three wires. And once we're done, you'll see how doing all of this tinning will make our soldering job super easy. So with our wires and our pads prepared, we can now connect them together. I'm going to start by holding our little PCB connector in place with one helping hand and then bringing in a tinned wire with the other hand and just pressing the soldering iron down on the tinned wire and the pad at the same time until the solder on both melts and runs together leaving us with a nice neat solder joint. It's very important that you touch both the wire and the pad because you want both sides to have their solder melt so that they can connect together and form a good connection. We can do the same process for both of the other pads just setting the wire on top, heating the pad and the wire until they merge and then removing the iron. And now we're on to the final set of connections. So I'm going to hold our PCB connector in one helping hand and the pixel stick 
in the other, making sure that my negative wire is right over the LED strips G and D pad, the ground pad for the LEDs. Then I'll bring in my iron and melt the solder on both the wire and the pad. Then we'll do the same thing for the other two pads, again being careful not to let the solder flow around too much as it could bridge between two of the pads and if you did that and didn't notice, it could damage your LEDs or the electronics from your hilt that are connecting up to the LEDs. And there we go. Now all of the soldering is done and the blade is almost ready. You may want to check that your soldering connections are good by connecting up your little PCB to a lightsaber hilt and making sure that all of the LEDs light up just the way they should. But I'm way too confident for my own good, so I didn't do that at all. Now all we have to do is assemble the blade, but first, Let's talk about assembling PCBs. If you want to make awesome electronics designs and have them manufactured at an incredibly high quality, you have to check out PCBWay. Don't have a 3D printer? You can order prints from them. Want to make a more polished version of your electronics project? They manufacture custom PCBs. Need strong parts with precise dimensions? They can CNC metal parts for you. And they do all of these things at incredibly affordable prices. So check out PCBWay.com right now to level up your next project. Now to hold this little PCB in place at the end of our blade, we have this little adapter which fits snugly around the PCB and also fits snugly into the blade itself. But fitting snugly is not enough for our blade to hold together under the battering that it's going to be taking. So we need to add some super glue as well to make sure these connections stay together. The first thing we want to do is slide our adapter all the way down the LED strips and get it right by the PCB. Then we can carefully add some super glue around the ring where the PCB is going to be resting on. I definitely recommend using gel glue. I had to switch to liquid glue later on as that's all that I had and it was kind of a mess. So if you can get gel glue, do get gel glue. Anyway, once we've applied the glue to our adapter, we can go ahead and slide the PCB in and make sure it's fully in contact with the adapter and all the glue is squished down and can hold those two things together. Then it's time to stack up the layers of the blade. So let's start with the foam, sliding that over all of our LEDs and then we can add the thin plastic diffuser. Now, neither of these is going to fit around the adapter. They fit after the adapter, but the actual main polycarbonate blade will fit over both of these and the adapter. So let's go ahead and add that, sliding it all the way down. And then before we put the adapter in, let's go ahead and add some glue in a ring around the edge of the adapter. And then we can go ahead and slide the adapter into the blade and we should have a nice strong connection at the base of the blade. Now, the last thing we need to do is figure out the tip area, but you can see even when we push the foam down as far as it will go, it still sticks up quite a bit. And it should actually stop a little bit before the top because the tip will go in about an eighth of an inch. So I'll just mark the foam at the end here, then we can pull it out a bit so we're not cutting the LEDs, which remember are inside it. And then we can go ahead and cut it a little below that mark so that the foam will fit in below the tip. Now, this doesn't have to be super exact because the foam is squishy. It will compress when you put the tip on. So I like to go a little bit on the side of having a little bit too much foam. Then we can go ahead and push the foam back in. And you'll notice that now the LEDs are sticking out. This is good though, because it means that the LEDs will go into the tip itself so that it will be lit up just like the rest of the blade rather than us having a dark spot at the end, which obviously doesn't look very attractive. So all we have to do is add some glue around the bottom of the tip and slide that in as well. And there you have it. You just made the best lightsaber blade that you could possibly make, or as far as I'm aware, that you could possibly even buy in the entire world. Now, if you wanna make an amazing set of hilt electronics to go along with it, I'm making a video on that too, which I'll put right here once I've finished it. So hopefully I'll see you over there.